Is it working? Is this working? Is this working? It is working. Hey! Charlie, you're first on tonight. Check out my shades. Welcome. Hey, John Farian. Congratulations on your 200th show, I think it was. Uh, very cool. Um, I don't know what number this is for me, but um, as you can see, I'm already going a little crazy. These are also really hard to see because this is one of my little peoples. Uh, and uh, she never really listens, like not to touch the lenses, right? So they always want to touch the lenses. When you say don't touch lenses, then they even touch the lenses even more. We'll let a few more people get on and uh, hey, check this out. Simon, thank you for sending me this tall boy beer. Look at this, psych it's Cyclops. It's an eyeball. And on this side, it's like a raven. It's super cool. So I'm going to crack that here. I hope you're having a beer wherever you are. Paul Prudhomme. Are you kidding me? Paul Prudhomme is on the After Dark show. Hey, Paul, in the uh, the new toolbox, these should come standard in it. Not as an accessory. These should come with the toolbox. So that when you're going to do some work, you got to look cool. I'm wearing these glasses tonight because we have Matt Tandrup on the show. He is Director of Design for ski Can-Am, and Parts and Accessories. So very cool. So a very special guest. I'll get to that a little bit more. I hope, number one, everybody's doing really well in the world. If you haven't seen it already today, please get on the Together We Ride video. This is a video that BRP produced with what's going on in the world. Uh, BRP is just a legendary company in my mind. It's just from the top down, from uh, uh, Jose uh, Bojali, uh the CEO. Uh, I always get to meet him and, and we always have, uh, he always has great wise words and it's an honor to always see him either at club or I saw him in Florida this year. And um, he is such an, a, a, a guy to admire for the work that he does. But um, they've done so many cool things at BRP during this time to help uh, ease the, uh, the, the the things that are going on with, with right at home with all their uh, employees. But also the video that you'll see today, it's on my page, it's on everybody's page. Uh, you can check it out and it really you know, hits home how we feel. We're, we're all in this together. Uh, together we ride and, and make sure that when you're out uh, and about, make sure you have a, a happy face, a smiley face for people and keep them happy during this time. Um, lots of people don't have other people. Uh, they might not have pets and they might be kind of on their own and that's a lot harder to deal with it than dealing when you have a family and people around you and all sorts of stuff. Everybody's handling this differently. So, um, Try not to, uh, if you see someone having a hard time, don't take it on your, don't take it the wrong way. Just uh, see if you can help them uh, change that a little bit. So I think that's a, a really good, good thing. And we're going to invite uh, Matt uh, Tanderup on right now. So Matt, if you're, I think you're watching, go live. We, we did a test today, so I know it works. And uh, we'll make sure that he's on. Hopefully you got the time change. Those guys are usually on, on time and they're, um, there, uh, but you, but you never know, right? Uh, so Matt, if you're out there, I'd never really uh, text him. Uh, there he is. There, I'll see if I can invite him on. No, I maybe hide. No, I don't want to do that. Uh, so Matt, if you can find it, either go off again and come back on, and I'll see where you are. And uh, what is this? Are these chats are super informative. Corey Spicer, hey, thanks. They are. Actually, that's the, the cool thing is we're getting to talk to people, including tonight, is you're getting to talk to people that you don't really get to n talk to that often. And um, yeah, I like that, Corey. BRP, Canadian company, Support Canada. I love it. And Simon, I know you just, uh, maybe you just joined, but thanks for the beers. Holy cow. I love getting packages in the mail. I pretty much get packages every day. We know the, uh, we know all the, the, uh, the, the people. Here's, here's Matt. We're going to invite him. All right, let's see how long this takes. He's in Montreal. I'm getting, hopefully I'm not freezing up, but he's, he, hey, Matt. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Dude, I'm just going to tell you, I wore these glasses because of you. And I'm also, I, this is me trying to, and I'll get to this in a little bit. Uh, I, this is me trying to impress you. Uh, so it's the design of these glasses. And also... I, I'm kind of lying a little bit because when we bought this house, 
uh, the person who wants to garden before, they set up the garden for the, at least since we've been here six years, every year. Look at the tulips that pop out of it. Dude, I have not, I, I only kill plants and not by meaning to, but I just wanted to sort of impress you and show you, like, I got the glasses going on and I, I got the, uh, I got the tulips. It's all me. Plus I got it. I got kind of a shiner because the other day I ran into a wall. I was so excited <laughs> that I was going to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, really. So, well, I love the glasses. I heard you talk to Paul about trying to put those into the toolkit. So we'll definitely uh, we'll look at that for for next year. Hey, for sure. I, don't, I don't want maybe you snow check only, like you know, kind of thing. So, so and, yeah. And, and I don't want you blowing sunshine. I if it's gonna happen, like if you don't believe it's a good idea, just tell me straight up. I can handle it. But I think it's a good idea. All right. No, I, I'm, I'm, I think sunglasses, that's appropriate. We could do something like that. You know, I, I think it works. And your garden does look beautiful. So I'm very impressed. Right. Very, on. Very well, impressed. I get to tell the first story about you. And okay. not, not a word of a lie. I told, I, I went on earlier with you. Um, and I get to tell you the first story. I get to tell the first story because people won't know really who you are. They've probably seen you like I had seen you. But I remember seeing, I never knew what you did. Uh, I, I, and you'll, you, can, you can back this up because I thought you were like, I thought you created a lot of the videos and stuff. And I would see you and all that. I'd see you at club and doing stuff. And I'd be like, I want that guy's job event. I got to learn how to be like that guy. And you do such an amazing job. But and we were talking today. No one really knows uh, even what you do. And uh, so please, I, I, I really thank you for taking the time for coming on the show because I think it's going to give a great insight to all of the viewers out there and the people who watch this later. But uh, I want to know first and foremost, what your job is because this might get difficult and technical, but just, you know, let's, let's roll with it. Yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, so I do do a lot of videos and things like that, but uh, overall the real job, what we do is uh, I'm director of design for ski do and Canem off road. And what uh, design's all about is product development. So we work with engineers, and I've got a design degree. And basically, uh, we work on all the aesthetics, the ergonomics, just, you know, what the vehicle looks like, the color, the whole thing. So we work tight with engineering. Actually, sometimes it's a battle as well, too. You know, you never know because we kind of conflict a lot. But uh, hey, basically, we're going we to gonna get into that. that. We're going to get into yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but no, so basically we, you know, the aesthetic of everything. I mean, there's a designer in the world everywhere, right? The, the shoes you wear, a designer touched those, the truck you drive, the house, everything. There was a designer that was involved in that. And obviously with power sports, it's the same thing. So. Yeah. And one of the things that I found that's really interesting is it's kind of a, the chicken and the egg thing that first, you know, there's lots of people out there that'll go, I choose whatever I want, no marketing, nobody's going to yeah. tell me what to wear. And then actually when you know what goes on kind of behind the scenes, you're like, it's almost like they're designing the stuff that they want us to wear and we're going to love it when it comes out. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and how you get to know this is we get, we get clothing samples and we see clothing yep. samples many years in, in, in ahead. And a lot of times you look at them and go, I'll never wear that. And then the funny thing is, is, when you see it, you're like, I love that yeah. when it comes out. And then it, how old your other stuff looks and how bad. And it, it is a very hard thing, not only for you and your team, but in every aspect from clothing to everything, is you're, most of the time you're living two to five to ten years oh, yeah. Yeah. ahead. And so I always tell people when they see something and they think I'm never – almost like the Tesla truck, right? Remember that? Yeah. Everybody was yeah. like, what an ugly – I said – when it comes out, you're going to love it and you're going to yeah. want it. And, and it, it's such a cool, w would that be kind of accurate, would you say? Well, yeah. And, and it's, it's tough too, because we kind of have to have like a crystal ball, right? Where we kind of look into the future and we say, okay, what are the trends going to be? And, you know, what are the technologies going to be? And how are we going to design around that? How are we going to make a better product for the customer? And I think it's getting tougher and tougher every day because, I mean, for us, it's like, you know, every year we, we go to the dealer show and we introduce new products. People are like, oh, my God, this is so awesome. And you're like, um, I don't know how we're going to top this, you know. And then we got to go back to the office and figure it out. So, but I think what's cool about Ski-Doo is that, you know, we, we ride with you guys. 
we ride with the customers and and i think you know we get so much feedback we get so much stuff there so yeah uh, hey, it's seven o'clock there hey you know it. it's rev for support so also because you're a designer uh my daughter allowed me to bring something special out here okay <laughs> <laughs> now did, did some designer touch this didn't they so i believe so yeah i'm sure to, to show you how uh she can be i wasn't allowed to bring me uh the stick to hit the glockenspiel yes I'm only, i am only allowed to play the piano the so, glockenspiel i haven't heard that in so long i can't believe i'm i'm hearing that tonight <laughs> is that going back to like grade two matt do you want the glockenspiel? yeah yeah i think i had one it was like first or second grade and i think that's where i learned to play the glockenspiel <laughs> it's, it's the only time the teacher got mad because whenever they gave you those sticks you just wanted to hit your buddy but you were only yeah. supposed to hit the glockenspiel they were very fragile yeah. Anyway, we want to say we want to say a big thank you to all the people on the front line, all the people that are out working, helping people, and uh, and we we call that Rev for Support. We we actually I love it. There's still so many people putting out uh, videos and sharing them with Speedo, yeah. tagging us, Rev for Support. It, it's really important. Much like the today the Together We Ride video that we did. Did you see yes, that, Matt? Yeah. Yes, I did. Of course, it's awesome. It's pretty awesome. pretty pretty emotional actually, right? When you work for a company that does so much and is so involved um, and how everybody is, it's really cool to see how not only do they just really like you guys want to bring everybody along for the ride. And that's what's really important is, is coming together and, and helping people in this time. Uh, it's no question. And I think, you know, our company, we have such a, a connection with our customers. And I think just in general, you know, it's such a tight community. Uh, you know, when you go riding and I think you see somebody else, you know, you always stop, you talk to him, you hang out. And, and if you ever see anybody in need, I, you know, I don't know anybody that just rides past somebody like, no, nope, you know, you stop, you try to help people out, try to see if you can fix their sled, whatever it is. But I mean, it's, it's an awesome community and I, I really love the message and it's so true. It's so honest. It's not, it's not just a marketing thing, you know, it's a real deal. So. Yeah. Well, hey, I got a, a cool, uh, somebody just put up something. He's like, I don't really know how you guys keep creating more innovative technology. You guys are incredible from design colors, ergo, fit and finish. So that's a, that, you know, that really sums it up. What do you, what do you have to say to that? Like, how do you, were you, well, I'll, I'll, let's answer that first. Do you, how do you guys keep coming up with stuff? <laughs> well, yeah, we pump a lot of special oxygen into the studio. No, it's uh no, uh, seriously, uh, it's one of those things where, you know, we, we, again, we ride with a lot of people. We, we do a lot of research. We take a lot of um, kind of inspiration from other industries as well, too. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other companies out there that are really pushing the boundaries. And for us, it's always cool to be able to reference somebody, bring that in and, and do things. But it's also riding with you guys. I mean, it's awesome. We have such a, a tight knit community of ambassadors and it's awesome because we can sneak out something for you guys to ride and you give us really stellar feedback. And so I think that connection also helps us to always innovate. But, you know, we brainstorm, we think we try to think outside the box and and we always try to exceed the customer's expectations. It's, it's never like, OK, we're just going to do something that's this is the normal thing. I mean, I think the 850 Turbo is like a perfect example of that, where it's like Rotax came together and they put together this just sick technology, you know, and you see this engine and you're like, okay, we got to do it justice. We got to put it in a sick sled. So now we're going to, we're going to design a sled. We're going to reduce the weight of do all these kind of things. So it's, it's just constant like that. We just continue to do that. And it's, it's super motivating. I mean, for me, I love going out riding and you'll meet somebody and they're like, oh man, you know, this snowmobile is so cool. It's just, it makes you feel, it's like a high that you could just never replicate. It's so cool. So cool. Yeah. I often tell people that uh, Joe Say just, he lets you all in and then he locks the door yeah. and then he, he pit it, he pits each, each uh, section against one another. And, and yeah, it's like hunger games. It's, it's a yeah. hunger game situation basically. Yeah, they don't get to come out for lunch unless something, unless something slipped under the, some design is slipped under the door frame. Then, then you get out. So it's, it's kind of encouraging that way. It's totally yeah. like that. Abso absolutely. Yeah. Lord of the flies, whatever you want. It's kind of that situation for sure. <laughs> so were you a pretty artsy guy in, in, uh, growing up? Like, is this something you wanted to do? What did, what did you want to do when you grew up? 
Uh, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And I was actually not very good at school. I was, uh, math wasn't really my thing. Um, you know, I was really just not a very good student. And I would uh, stay awake in class by sketching cars and motorcycles. And I would just doodle. And that's what would keep me awake in class. And uh, somehow I, I kind of made it through class. And I got to where my, I was going to go to college. And I'm like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, like, I just, I just don't know. And uh, then I kind of started talking to people and said, hey, you know, there's people that like design cars and design motorcycles and snowmobiles and everything else. And so I started looking around and I'm like, all right, that's what I'm going to do. So I knew I was like, if I can draw things for a living, I mean, that's a that's a pretty sweet job. So that works good. Yeah. So um, what was your first job at BRP? Uh, I was a uh, project leader. Uh, it was a Can-Am off-road. I was working on the G2 Outlander. So I've been with BRP for about uh, over 10 years now, and I've been in the power sports industry for over 22 years. So, and I actually started out automotive design is where I, where I started. And where, where did you start with automotive? Like what, what automotive company? Uh, I had some internships with like General Motors and Honda and stuff, but I, I really didn't even stay in Detroit. That's where I went to school. And uh, it just car design, it was just such big companies and so much politics and everything like that. And now when I look at it, I, I just love because I get to design cool products. You know, I, I call my friends like in Detroit. I'm like, hey, what are you working on? Like uh, the aerodynamics for this bumper, you know, we've got to smooth out this door <laughs> handle. And they're like, what are you working on? I'm like, I'm just trying to make sure this hood doesn't fly off this sled because we're airing it out 150 feet off a gap. And they're like, okay, you win, you win, you know, like, so yeah. So it's power sports is the way to go. Smaller yeah. company, you get to touch it all the way through. Uh, the projects and it's it's just it's so much fun. I mean, we, we just get to ride all day and I, it's a job like that where you get to design and ride seriously. Nothing better. Yeah. So I, that that's awesome. I like I said, right? I really admire all the things that you've done. And and, and this is why I ask this question is and these questions is it's really helpful and I don't think everybody realizes it is I was the sort of same way right I didn't really know what I not that I wasn't good in school I really kind of wasn't it wasn't that interesting to me and when I came out of high school I didn't really know what I wanted to do but I knew I didn't want to waste time or, or you know lots of kids get help from their parents to get into college or university and I didn't want to waste money or time mine or my parents uh, going to university without having a direction that's just not the way I work and, yeah, yeah and and at that time I sort of really I started getting into sports and I really like biking and running and that's kind of you know I set me down a, a rabbit hole that I kind of like you right you just said if I could do this and and when I started racing I was like wow this is amazing and if I could keep doing this and once I got a few sponsors and figured it out I was like wow I I can do this and and um and it sounds sort of like similar to your path is um and why it's important is I think people is it isn't just drawing and doing that you all it's a huge work ethic like I, I don't mm -hmm. think people know and, and you're describing it well in a, in a sense that it is riding and whatever and all that but you guys and I know everybody in BRP is, is like they, they are in a good way like I would call myself a workaholic yeah oh yeah for sure there's no question we're fast-paced and and uh, everybody, but again, it, it, what's cool is you're working for a really cool company. I mean, we could be designing toasters right now and not, no offense to anybody out there that's, that's designing toasters, but I mean, you know, it's, it's, we're designing a really cool product. And I think that's what, that's what pushes the enthusiasm for people to work super hard to, to just drive hard and be like, look, we got to be better than the next people. We've got to put out the best product for the customer. And that, that's, what's really key for us. I mean, it, it's, that's what drives you. I mean, if you're not, excited about what we're doing then you shouldn't be at this company seriously it's uh you know it's it's fun we, we get to do cool things and it's about creating things too i talk to a lot of people that you know pretty successful in careers and stuff you know like finance whatever but they always like man matt like you get to actually get create things you know and that's pretty cool and it's like and, and i love that it's it's like that's such a cool perspective to to think about is it you know we, we take a clean sheet of paper and we start sketching on it an idea and we say, ah, this, I think this is what we want to do. And we go from there. And I think that's what's pretty cool. So, Hey, uh, anything you're sketching right now that we can know about? Hey, every time I see you, you're always trying to plug me for <laughs> what's coming out in the future. And it never works. It never, never works. I, I, I see you coming from a mile away. And, and no matter if, if I've had a couple cocktails, it doesn't matter. You still try to jump in there. But I, I 
lips are sealed. I can't, I can't say anything. I can't, you know, you know that. You, you didn't, you didn't uh, get, you didn't get that bottle of whiskey. You didn't, you didn't tap. Yeah, that yeah. You're supposed to FedEx me out a bottle of whiskey. We're supposed to do shots until I start talking about uh, what we're gonna do for next year. So yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> but I, I said to it Matt, didn't come. Uh, one of our one of our ski do ambassadors, Rob Koning, he actually uh, was an F16 pilot, oh, nice. and he's rad. And he then was he now flies for FedEx. So he flies around the world with a FedEx plane. And I was going to try to get him to drop off some some whiskey. Just out the, <laughs> hey, slide the window open when you go over Montreal. Drop it out. We'll see, if it, we'll see if it gets to him. Like he's a pretty talented guy. I figured he would. You know, he'd figure out the land. The latitude, longitude, the wind yeah. distance, all that stuff that would probably end up on your driveway. Um, but it is something we always say. You know what, you know what Craig Fortune always says he, when I ask him something? He goes, uh, Dave, just don't ask me and then I don't have to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's well put. So, Very well put. So fortunately, I do get to know on lots of products. But it, it, is, uh, it, isn't, it almost isn't fun keeping things secret because um, – and, and this is the other thing is – our group, all the people and why this show is, is even happening is our, it's the most passionate industry there is. There is no other industry that's as passionate as a snowmobile industry. No question. And they're, they're going to let you know when like that toolbox doesn't work like they want it. They, they're going to, if they could, they'd, they'd send a bear banger right through your front door <laughs> yeah. into your living room. And, um, and they'll let you know about it, which is kind of fun because it kind of pushes you to make it better and better and better. And it's not always, it could be very misdirected sometimes, but, <laughs> but it's very passionate. I think that's what, what is so fun oh, about yeah. the job, right? No question. Everybody's passionate through the whole process. It's the way it is. And I think, uh, for me, uh, I love to get those complaints and I think I've given out my email to too many too many people because it's like I'll have a dealer like it'll be Christmas day and they're like, "What's up with the suspension calibration? Like, what are you guys doing?" You know, I'm like, "Man, it's Christmas day. Like, can I have just one day off?" And they're just like, "This isn't right, man." You know, like, what, "What's what's going on here?" So it's just great. I, I love that. It's seriously uh, again. It we could be designing a hundred other things, and but we're doing snowmobiles, and and seriously, it's it's the coolest job. I, I love it. Getting a ride, getting a ride with you guys uh it's it's great it's great so and here's another uh question is um yeah. someone said you know we we are really leaders in the market with with um in canam and skidoo it seems that um you're more in the forefront with sleds but you're following a little bit in the dirt segment i don't i actually don't agree with that but but do you think you're like because right now the biggest growing segment is side by side no doubt about it yeah and 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 we're yeah. we're we, we've come, you know, uh, Polaris is, is kind of the leader in that because they created the, the razor. Everybody knows about Pretty it. Pretty much so. Yeah. Yeah. And, they created, they created the sports segment. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and we're sort of, I, I wouldn't say, you know, yeah, I guess you could say we're following, but when I look at the designs and the vehicles and, and, and because I've ridden them everything from the Mavic trail to the X3 to turbo, I, I, I am literally like, I never grew up as a side-by-side -side guy. I was always a dirt bike guy. And, yeah. and so dirt bikes, when you're a dirt bike guy, you just don't like ATVs. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and you know, it's kind of what you're preached to, right? And, yeah. and then I remember even side-by-side, -side, I'm like not into that. And then I rode in one and I was like, this is the future. Like I said, if I go down Baja now, I don't want to be on a motorbike and be, because what happens is yeah. you eventually make a mistake and wipe out. I would way rather be in an X3, which I have done many times in Bob, yeah. Yeah. ripping through all the beaches and all the places. And you have this roll cage and it, and it really, you feel like you feel in that X3, like you are uh, Robbie Gordon driving a, a, a Bob oh, yeah. truck. Yeah, no, no. For, uh, there's no question that, I think, you know, we all grew up on dirt bikes and then there was kind of an evolution to ATVs for a while. I mean, we all had sport quads and then all of a sudden like performance side-by-sides came out and yeah, we were late to the game. Okay. So we were pretty much the last in the industry. And in 2011, we came out with the commander and then from then on in, you know, but, but I also am really proud of us because in the, over the 10 years, I think we went from being the last ones in the game to being the ones that are changing the game. I really believe that, and, and it's not just because I work for the company, but, I mean, we are doing things that are influencing the rest of the industry, and, and I really love it. 
So, you know, it's, it's, we're still, we're still, you know, behind the giant over there, the, the big blue star, but you know, overall, like, I mean, I think we're doing awesome things and, and they're trying to chase us down, you know, because we're eating market share people. They see the quality of our products. They appreciate what we're doing design wise. So I think overall that that's, you know, for me, I'm really proud of all the things we've achieved in that. Cause you're right. Snowmobile business, we've been in for over 50 years. And, and I mean, so, and we're absolutely dominating. We're doing great things there and we love it, but you know, off-road, it's very competitive. It's a growing segment and there's some cool things going on, but what, that's what I also love about that segment. It's so competitive, you know? So every year the customers are getting really cool stuff that are coming out. I mean, I, I look at some of the competitors this year, they've introduced some really good product and it's stuff that I, I really appreciate. You know, it's, I, I'm not a, a biased kind of guy that I'm just like, Oh, I'm just, you know, I'm BRP and that's it. You know, we're always riding the competition as well. We're looking at what they're doing and we really appreciate what they're doing too. I mean, there's, there's cool product out there. And I think if you're in the snowmobile, you know, you want a sled, you want a side-by-side, -side, you want whatever. I mean, I think this is an awesome time to be in the industry because there's so many options for what you can do, you know, and there's new stuff coming out every year. So it's just like, I mean, that's just crazy. I, I, I love that. Yeah, I often tell people that we are actually living in the best time right now. And the reason for that is we saw what side-by-sides used to be like, regardless of brand. And we see what they are right now. And oh, yeah. we're going to still be able to enjoy where they're going in the next 10 years, which is going to be insane. And it's the same with sleds, right? We saw yeah. what a, you know, a 2000 ZX chassis 700 did. <laughs> Yeah. And now we're comparing it to a 175 turbo. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's not even, it's funny. The areas you used to ride, you just blow by anymore and you go, why would I even ride there? I'm going to the top to ride. Yeah. And, yeah. and, it, and it's, it's, it, it's that, you know, I think what people forget is they don't look back and, and, and not everybody should look back, but when, you, when you've experienced that, it, boy, is it sure cool, right? I have a woman who lives right next to me. She's 95. And she was an SOS. Uh, she did SOS to the British planes flying in the war. Oh, nice. And she's just turned 95. And she's, she, we chat about it all the time. And I always ask her, awesome. I'm like, what, what was it like to do this, right? And, you know, she grew up. I always tell her she's, she's older than Time Magazine, right? So yeah, yeah. she's older than, I always tell her she's older than Time. So, um, but I, but it's so cool to talk to somebody like that. And we are experiencing right now, like it's not just going up every year. It's literally topping out every year at like, you know, as someone said, how can you, what is, what is possible? I mean, most people who ride at like a 175 turbo a snowmobile now, you go, <laughs> yeah. how with shot start and mm -hmm. you know, all the bells and whistles, you're like, how can you top this? So, so how, take us through, uh, let's, let's just start from the beginning. Take us through the process that happens. Like we got the 175 turbo now. Uh, there's no doubt you probably got the flying airplane from Jose as he whistled by on his, uh, <laughs> on his electric scooter through the BRP yeah. offices that, and you opened it up with a special thing that will disintegrate in about five seconds. And it said, top it or don't come back. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, it, I think the 850 Turbo this year was something that's pretty exciting. We're seeing the feedback from it's been really good. And, and so obviously now, you know, for us, it's like, okay, what, what do we do next? And is it, you know, something we'll do in the mountain segment? Is it something that we'll do in the trail segment? Where are we going to go with this? And, you know, uh, it, it's always that thing, more, more HP is always a good thing. Less weight's always a good thing. So there's always those pieces to the recipe. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, we just, we just kind of start from where we're at and we say, okay, now where we're going to go next. And, and again, I can't tell you too much of the secret recipe, obviously, uh, hey, hey guys, you'll I'm start gonna... making your own snowmobiles and then, then, then we'll be out of business. So it's yeah, just, you I'm, know, I'm... You're, you're, you're tackling late night shows and then you're going to get into something else. I don't know what it, how many shows have you done so far? I don't even know. I, I, uh, you know I think what? you've done so many that you need a band. <laughs> it's a late night show and you're the only guy I know that doesn't have a late night show that I think, I think you need a band now. Well, I'll tell you right now, I probably, I'm going to, I work just like you, right? I just get things <laughs> rolling and then I come up with, I come up with a budget, but you, you know, you got to be careful with budgets, especially right now. So yeah. I, I just slip, I slip things in a little bit. I okay. just roll, roll them through the door. 
and and hey, you just wait, buddy. One day there's gonna be a band right here. Okay? Yeah, I thought maybe right you have there. the roots just playing in your on your deck over there or something like that. I just was. Do you have and a coffee I, mug at least that says like late night well, with Dave yet? Well, I got the beer. Uh, you get the beer, but I mean, you know, like every late show has a coffee mug, and I'm just wondering, like, <laughs> you're giving me. You know what? It's that's the problem with having a guy like you on the show. You, 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 you're so fancy, that, and you know so much that you're making my show look cheap. I'm not being fancy. I'm sitting in my garage right now. Right? Like, it's not Did very. Did I fancy. show you my? This is right now. This is my band. Okay. I There's do, your band. I do everything. The, the, the best part about the Glockenspiel. The best part about doing everything is I get to cash the whole check. There's no, there's no I'm not passing it out to anybody else. Hey, okay. I, another right. good question we had. Yeah. Is uh, what's your favorite thing about working for BRP? Uh, I I think it's just uh, as I said before, it's it's riding. I, I love riding the product. I mean, the, the fact that there's some days I go to work and I get to ride all day in some of the coolest areas, you know, I mean, we, we get to go all over the world and ride with cool customers, with ambassadors, whatever. I mean, I think that's just an epic part of the job. Second thing I would say is just, um, I think just again, creating cool stuff. You know, when, when we get to do something that's super cool and then you talk to the customer that bought that product, I mean, and they're just, they're just absolutely like, they're blown away. They're like, this thing is so awesome. I've been, you know, saving up for this. this is just this, my dream sled or whatever. I mean, to me, it's just like when you meet that guy at the bar or on the trail or whatever, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it, it just, it just doesn't get any better than that. You, you just, it's those days you're like, man, I, I feel guilty uh, collecting a paycheck. Seriously. Yeah. So. They asked both of us. So I'll tell you my favorite part about working for BRP is, I, I agree. So my favorite thing is like, I always tell people I'd be doing what I'm doing right now, whether I was working with BRP or not, I'd have a be have snowmobiles yeah. and I'd be sled skiing and I'd be riding e-bikes and dirt bikes and trials bikes and going to Baja and kiting. And I always said when I, when I was racing, I'd be doing this anyway. The fact that it's my job is, is like the bonus. What I love about working with BRP is exactly why I'm talking to you is uh, when I go there, I learn. And so I've always thought of my jobs as educational. So when I get to work for BRP, I get to, like my the person who I talk to, Steve Cowing, I learn so much from him. And Ross, our social media guy, I learn tons. And all the marketing people, all the clothing, talking to you, seeing you at shows, talking, going to Rotex and seeing how, like you see the assembly line and when, when before yeah. the turbo and the 900 e, uh, e, uh, Ace Turbo was developed, before we were watching it being the first ones coming off the assembly line and you're just like, and, and just watching the people that have to order every part before that engine can be assembled yeah. And, yeah. Make, and make most of the parts. And like what you do, right? You got to make the stuff. You got to dream it. You got to make it and then put it together. Like uh, for me, that is just uh, in a way, I don't care what it is. I just care of the educational value that it, everything sure. I learn, and then it helps you in my everyday life. It helps me how I work with sponsors, how I do things. Like I'm a product of my environment as we all are. And so I, like I, I, I said to, um, my wife i said uh i love doing these shows i get i'm so <laughs> excited and and i in a way you can see how when you watch the tonight show or whatever the shows you watch you kind of go wow they're so jazzed and you're like how could you not be jazzed like what you're doing right he's like how could you come and do the, if i come to do my job and i'm miserable i i'd just be i I'd, I'd want to kick myself in the face Ah, I, I agree. No, no, it's, it's, yeah. there's not a bad day at the office for sure. I like the comments yeah. coming in too, like bring back the Elan. That's a good one. And then yeah. next, the next one, are you going to, when do you think BRP is getting the electric market? I mean, that's awesome. Good questions. I mean, it's uh, people are really enthusiastic. So that's They're cool. already there. They're already yeah. there. The BRP is in the electric market. Well, I mean, we we introduced some prototypes this year and stuff like that. So I think, you know, for us, it's uh, we're still looking at those concepts and, and, and looking at the, the, the viability of it. But what I can say about BRP and electric, I mean, I think, you know, you see a lot of automotive companies trying to do like urban mobility and electric, and they're just trying to make cars smaller. 
And it doesn't really work. It's not really a recipe. Whereas for us, I mean, you know, we, we, we're used to doing small vehicles, uh, efficient vehicles, you know, with a lot of horsepower, lightweight, which just lends itself to a really good EV platform as well, too. So we're currently, we're still working on stuff, but, uh, you know, keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, I like it because, as you know, I ride e-bikes. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of funny, right? Because there's lots of manufacturers that, that can't afford to come out with an e-bike because it takes a lot of design and expense yep. and whatever. And Santa Cruz was like, you know, they're a big brand and they're a kind of a boutique brand and people are kind of snobby, right, when they ride one of yeah, those bikes. Yeah, totally. And it was funny then they came out with the e-bike and then they had, oh, well, we waited because we wanted to make a really good e-bike. And I'm like, I've been riding e-bikes, you know, like at that point I had 15,000K on e-bikes and I'm like, it's the exact same, buddy. There's no difference between your e-bike and the geometry, you know, yeah, it's a yeah. little bit this and that. So I really admire that because I know when you do, and if you do come out with something electric, it's going to be rad. And, yeah. and I will say when you, you had the electric uh, commander, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That was a number of years ago. Yep. Yep. And so I think it was too early because when you, when you spend the money, you know, it's going to be more money. People want it to be better. And, and yeah. BRP is excellent at making something always better. It's never worse. It's always better. And well, so, that's what we want to do. We always try to do it right from the start. You know, it's yeah. like we're not going to introduce something that's going to be half-assed. It's got to be right from the start. So Yeah. And I think not that that was half-assed. I think the problem with it is people it have too early. Yeah. yeah. They have an expectation of what your commander will. It's like dirt bikes, right? If you go buy an electric dirt bike right now to go ride in the trails mm -hmm. and you buy a gas one, well, you can go for four hours and fill it with gas. I have to go home after two and charge my bike. And so it's, it's, it's not, I love the technology, but it's just not there yet. When it, mm -hmm. when it gets there, I'm all in. Yeah. And so I really admire that because BRP will do it when it's ready. I know lots of people saw the electric sled from, I think it's Tiger or Tiger or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. And, it, and it is great. And it's going to be great at first with ski resorts and stuff, but it's like, you guys think it's going to happen tomorrow. It's it, these things take a lot of time. It and does. you would know that. It, it does. Autom automotive was the same way. I mean, and, and it took a long time and now it's, it's well adopted. So it's, it's the same process. And, and, and that's why, we, again, we're listening to our customers, you know, and what they really want and, and, and what are the needs right now? It's like, uh, so, but we're still, I mean, again, we're looking at everything. We're always, as, as I said before, we're, you know, we've got an advanced design group that's they're kind of locked down in our basement and uh, they're looking at things that are like 10, 15 years out. It's, it's, it's crazy. So, yeah. And, hey, what kind of cars do those guys drive? Uh, most of them are driving EV. We, we've got a lot of people driving electric cars now. Um, but the problem is, is there's not like any EV tr uh, pickup trucks out there right now. So a lot of people still have trucks as well. When you work for a power sports company, you've got to have a vehicle that has a trailer hitch. I mean, that's just, yeah. I think, prerequisite you, you have to have that so yeah, yeah. i only ask that because you guys are always on the cutting edge and 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 you're you're i would say you're early adopters i had to learn this i re, you know i'll tell you my quick story on how i kind of like i i remember remember when uh facebook wanted to have a timeline photo like your big photo across the top oh yeah yeah and nobody wanted to do it in fact there was a facebook page against having a timeline photo on your <laughs> facebook page and I remember reading about it and I was like, wow, I said, you know what? I always ask people to look forward and try new things. You don't have to always buy them, right? You could try something and still use your three-year-old sled and have a great time, but always try it. And I said, I can't, I can't be against moving forward if I'm always telling people to try moving forward. And I remember I just went right into my timeline photo and it's like, it's so funny, right? Like once you do it, you're like, this is the best thing ever. Yeah. yeah exactly. and, and, and now it's a part of face. Like if you don't, if you, if you go to somebody's Facebook page and they don't have a timeline photo, you're like, this is a spam account. Yeah. <laughs> and, and unless it's someone like you, who's like, you're locked in the basement and you can't get out because Jose has the key and you haven't. That's right. Yeah. Out. Yeah. We, we have no idea what's going on social media. So no, yeah. no we're, well, we're totally locked away. And <laughs> what, what was that? What was that new design you were going to tell me about? Yeah, right. There you go again. There you go again. It's uh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so uh, a couple of, uh, we, we talked, you talked a little bit about it is, um, I, I know it a little bit, but, but because you work closely with engineering, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about the, the, 
the battle because I, I, <laughs> people, I think people don't understand is you can dream and you can build all this stuff, but it also has to fit into this, the, the snowmobile and it also has to be cost effective, right? People, yeah, I don't think yeah. people, it would be great to make a snowmobile that was $80,000 and it would be, it would be unbelievable, but it would be eighty thousand dollars, and the, and your the the two percent of the market that it could afford it, well, you'd go bankrupt trying to sell it to them. Right, uh, right. So, so tell us a little bit about how that works between you guys in design and then the engineers. Who's who's well, better? Who's who's tougher? I can't say who's tougher, uh, but what I would say is that working with engineering, it's like any relationship. Uh, it's all about compromise. You know, uh, if you think about any relationship, uh, it's it's about compromise. And but no, so I think for us, it's always, you know, your button heads and your, you know, they want a square hole and we want a round peg kind of thing. And but it, it's always it's, it's kind of fun because it's that challenge of trying to go through the process of, OK, we have this really awesome idea. And you're right. How do you make it cost? How, how do you make it work and how do you make it affordable? And then also how do you manufacture it? Obviously, that's another thing, because. You know, you, we could look at, oh, we're going to make a totally carbon fiber sled. It's going to be awesome. But, you know, that, it, as you say, it's going to cost like 80 grand. So it, it's all those elements that go together that make it for a good recipe. But, yeah, there's a lot of challenges. And, you know, we've, we've definitely had some shouting matches behind closed doors on, uh, you know. But I, I can't say who's tougher. Uh, I don't did, know. Did, I, did you know, ever I, have I, I, I can be a pretty, pretty hard ass sometimes. But, uh, no, it, it really is about compromise. Uh, Did you ever because in have the to... end, it's like you could be yelling at each other saying, look, this is the way it needs to be. But we really look at who's the third party that's involved in this argument, and it's the customer. So what's best for the customer? And I think that's where we usually come to where our compromise is going to be because we're all the same goal. We just want to make an awesome sled. We want to just, again, exceed the expectations of the customer. That's what we do. So. Um I know the chairs are pretty comfortable in your office. Did you ever have to get out of your chair and like point at an engineer and then even lean, <laughs> like lean into them? Yeah. The intimidation of like kind of, you know, standing over somebody. Yeah. That's, that's more kind of mad men, like 70s style. Like I think we're a lot more political about how we do things now. I don't, I don't think HR is really, really into me intimidating people into what I want now, but uh, so, so in the old with- days, in the old days, you could do that for sure. Like, yeah, because in the old days, you could throw a stapler at somebody. Are they chained down now? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We don't even have staplers. There's no paper anymore. It's I technology, will, man. We're, we're I, all computer, we're digital now. There's no staplers. You, the you stapler know, business is gone. Like, you know, I, when, when is the last time you stapled something? <laughs> Every day when I go to Canada Post, buddy. Okay, all right. Because yeah, hey, we're all digital. We're, we're like... You know David uh, Ter Ter I forget how to say his last name, but anyway, he's in uh, he's in sort of marketing. I think he's somewhere else now. But the best thing he told me is, um, and I don't know if you do, but they play hockey in the morning. So yeah, they play, that's right. They play yep. And he told me, this is how passionate people at BRP are. He told he got into he somebody checked him, and I think it was like upper management, one of his yeah. the guy, yeah. And, yeah. And they dropped gloves. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And they dropped gloves and kind of, you know, it didn't get too crazy. But he said, I was going into the dressing room and I thought I was going to get fired. Yeah. And yeah. then and then whoever his boss was at the time, he just said, uh, hey, man, what happens on the ice is on the ice. And it was all cool. <laughs> yeah, this is Canada. And so hockey is obviously the national sport. And so a lot of the employees, we, we've got an arena in Balcor. And uh, so there's a lot of hockey and uh, they, they play a lot of morning games. Unfortunately, I'm from the States. And so I got weak ankles. So I'm not much of a hockey player, unfortunately. Although they ask you that in your interview, when you come into the job, uh, how good of a hockey player are you and what position <laughs> do you play? Uh, so they can size you up and say, okay, not only should we hire this guy for the job, but he's going to do really good on our team. Uh, but unfortunately, I got weak ankles, and so I'm pretty I'm pretty mean deck hockey guy. But uh, when it comes to skating, not so much. I I'm you know the kid with the chair on the ice. That's basically me. That's that's my level of skating, which they were a little bit disappointed about. But uh, no, it's 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 fierce. It's like they'll say like so. You know my my boss uh, is senior VP guy, and it's funny because uh, I had another guy that was that was skating with him from I think it was marketing or something, and totally just laid him out. And he's like, oh, my God. 
I just laid out your boss this morning. It's crazy. Like I'm, I'm not going to be here. And it was just, it's almost like my boss like, no, nah, it's all good. It's like, it's like a level of respect. Yeah. And of course they're going to come back, you know, even harder the next time on you. Yeah. But yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you know, obviously, obviously it's, it's a religion up here for sure. Yeah. When you do, when you lay out your boss, you probably, you might want to check the bolts on your wheels, your lug nuts before you <laughs> get out of the parking lot. Well, it's either that or Friday afternoon, you're like, oh, boy, there's that meeting that doesn't have a title to it, and it's in the HR office. So what could that be? You know, like, don't go to that. Don't, don't go. Just go yeah. home. That's what you need to I, do. So. Hey, I'm always worried. I'm always waiting and worried about my pink slip, too. Unfortunately, yeah. I haven't got one yet. Um, there hey, so, so what's your favorite to design? Is it a Can-Am, a uh, Sea-Doo? You do, do you do Sea-Doo or just Can-Am and Ski-Doo? Just Can-Am and, uh, and Ski-Doo. So. Okay, so what's your favorite to design? Uh, I, there's no favorite. It's like picking a kid. You know, Wh which one of your kids is your favorite? It's the same thing. Same thing. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, come on. I mean, I know no. they're your kids. You got a favorite. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't say it publicly, but of yeah. course you, yeah, you don't. Favorite. You don't say it. Yeah, you don't, you don't say it. But yeah. uh, I mean, look, it's, it's like teachers saying, yeah, I don't have a favorite. They got favorites. No, yeah, of course, of course. But uh, no, seriously, like, I think there's a couple stellar projects that that stand out for me. And I think, I mean, just recently the 850 turbo was just a lot of fun. That was a cool project. And it was where like engineering design, we were just like on a rhythm and we, we just put together a sweet project. I mean, it just came together like awesome. I, I really love that one. And then I'd have to say like Maverick X3 has just been, it's been phenomenal. I mean, we, we came out with that now almost three years, four years ago you know, the competition still hasn't come up with something that's even close to it yet, you know, like, and I'm really proud of that because that was like one of those projects where it was like, look, we're not just going to go to here. We're just, we're going to leapfrog and we're going to, we're going to just absolutely blow them away. And, and, and I think, so that one was fun too. And it was, again, I think I just go back to, it was like a fun project where both like that 850 and I think also like the X3, it was like one of those projects where there were people wanting to sign up for this project because they knew how awesome it was from the start and and they were like oh i want to, and we had to turn people down we're just like it's just there's too many people working on this project you know we already have enough people because you get so fired up and you're like nope i want to be a part of this i want to work on this project and so sometimes you get some of those that come through the office and it's just like so i think those two were were pretty awesome to work on where it's like you'd go into a conference room and you'd be like yeah we want like x3 for example like yeah we're gonna do like 20 inches of travel and you're like what like that's never been done. Like 16 is like the max. And like, and then another engineer comes and is like, what if I can make 24? And you're just like, no, nah, come on. Really? Like two feet of travel. And the guy's like, I think I got an idea to do it. And we're like, all right, get on it, do it. And we just, wow. we just all ran out of the conference room. And the next week we came back and we had it all worked out, but it was just like, you know, that kind of level of motivation, excitement that just boom, 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 it just goes, you know? So, yeah. Um, I will, I'll add this and I don't know if it's true. Like to me, a snowmobile is more, uh, it needs to be a certain way to do a certain job. Like, and like, you know, in, lots of people say that the G4 looks like a duck and it's funny the other day, <laughs> especially the turbo, it was sitting up. I was, uh, this is like, or, you know, we were, when, when you're riding, you come back to your sled and you go, Oh, I kind of see that, but it kind of looks like a, a mad max duck. Like don't mess yeah. with me. This is a turbo. <laughs> And I could kind of see that, right? And, but to me, everything on a snowmobile is kind of utilitarian in the sense that it has yeah. to be that, like it's designed that way because you're in the snow and all this stuff. And to me, an X3 also has to be like that. But there's way more about the look of an X3. Like I don't really, it's not that I want my, my snowmobile to be ugly and nor do I think it is. I just don't really care as much as if I, I think the consumer with an X3 because yeah, it's got to work in the desert and mud and do all this rad stuff. But when you go down to like California and you see what they're doing <laughs> and they're all hanging out in the sun and this and that, like you just don't hang out with your snowmobile when it's like nuking snow. Like you kind of park, you, yeah, know, yeah. you get off your yeah. snowmobile and throw it in your trailer. And, and it's not, again, it does, it's not that it doesn't matter what it looks like. Um, but it, to I me, don't know, I hear that. Yeah. I hear that but but it's it, it really is about functionality i mean function drives form right and, and we're not just doing things to be superficial I, I think when you see a lot of that stuff out there that's it's like so superficial it's just oh we're gonna do this because it looks beautiful and there's some dude with a beret on and a freaking you know turtleneck sweater that's like trying to explain the design and you're like all right i'm done with this you know it's like for us i mean it 
it, it can't be superficial design. It has to be legitimate. You know, it's got to be honest and it's got to be functional. And I'll tell you what, like I have talked to guys like, oh, I don't really care what my sled looks like. But I'll tell you what, like sled beds in the back of pickup trucks become awful popular. And yeah, one, it's convenient because you're not dragging around a trail. But two, everybody sees your sled up there. And the guys yeah. will keep them. I go out to BC and I see those guys. They're not snowmobiling. They're going to the bar. But sleds are still up on the sled bed there because they're like, check out this, man. I got the new ride, you know. So, so I hear that a lot. And even in like the utility segment, we've gone down and talked to farmers and stuff to like defenders and everything. And, and it's always like, I don't care what it looks like. And you're like, really, do you? You know, and then you'll just be like, I could show you a really ugly picture of something. And you're like, do you? You're going to drive that? And like, no, I'm not going to drive that. It looks like crap. You know, like, oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> so it's like, you know, every dude will say, oh, you know, I, I don't care what it looks like. But realistically, you know, you want it to look cool, but not in a superficial way where it's like these little plastic pieces that break off and stuff like that. And like the A50 Turbo, it's super basic. I mean, it's a one-piece hood. It was the objective was is to like save as much weight as possible. And we were looking at all sorts of like super sports cars and stuff because they're doing stuff that's they got to be really lightweight, really basic and minimalistic. So, you know, we're like, all right, let's reference that. So it's really clean. And, you know, we want to be lightweight, durable, you know, that kind of stuff. So that, that's where it kind of drove us, you know. Yeah. We still want to make it look aggressive and we wanted to make it look like a ski dude. It's still got the DNA of a ski dude. So. Hey, hey when, when's the new X4 coming out and what color is it going to be? Yeah, yeah, I see that. I saw that comment, the X4. Yeah, I think I think if we come out with another X3, it'll, it'll probably still be called the X3. I don't know if we'll go X4, but uh, you never know. You never know. I think, it um, should be, I think it should be X10 and it should be in Roman numeral number. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take, I'm going to write that down. I, I'm taking notes from you. Every time I see you, I'm always, it's cool I, I ideas. Either. I either just got moved up the ladder or I uh, the ladder was taken away. I think the, the sunglasses, you know where you're at already with that. You know, you, you, you know what part of the ladder you're on now. Like, <laughs> does, it, does, it, does it sound bad? I think it should be Roman numeral numbers 10, the, the yeah. B and the, the I before it. Okay, fair enough. I got that. I got that. And by the way, the other thing that I love is like every time we come out with a new design, everybody thinks it looks like something. They always... Yeah. There's the keyboard jockeys on the internet and they're always smart ass and they've always like, you know, it's no matter what it is, they'll have like a picture of Jar Jar Binks and they're like, Oh, it looks like that. How funny is that? You know, so no matter what, no matter yeah. how good of a design it's going to be, it's always going to be made fun of at first for sure. There's no question. So I'll, I'll tell, <laughs> I'll start, I'll start, but how I deal with that, because I get it a lot too, right? Yeah. Uh, you're always going to do it, get, get kind of, you know, ribbed and whatever. Oh, yeah. I, re I remember uh, J.F. Lambert, a good friend of mine who helped design that turbo motor. Yep. He, he, I remember him and I were chatting and I was saying something and he goes, you know what, though, Dave, that those are passionate customers. And without them, we wouldn't have a job. <laughs> True. True. And, and, and it actually, you know, it, it's one of those things where people say, you know, move, move and your perspective will change on something so that you when things bother you. And they do some things bother me for sure. And I have to, I teach myself how to get over them. Cause you know, you, I, I'm this why I'm going to ask you. And then that was one of those defining moments where he changed my perspective of that. You know, they're so passionate that they actually care yeah, and they care yeah. to let you know. And so it changes it from being a negative into a positive. And, and that's, that's really helpful when you do what we kind of all do. But how do you deal with that when someone says like, who designed the X3 <laughs> and made it gold and you know, whatever they do. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. No, so it's, you... uh, we, we always get that. It's like, who's that guy that designed that, you know, whatever uh, negative comments and stuff like uh, I don't, it doesn't really bother me that much. I, you know, cause for every negative comment, there's, there's like dozens and dozens of positive comments. And, and one of the things that my boss told me, which I thought was pretty cool back in the day is that, you know, if you're not, pushing the limit of like design and stuff, you know, everybody's going to like it. It's just going to be vanilla, you know? And if you don't get like maybe 25 or 30% of the people like, I don't like that. It, it's not polarizing. Then you haven't done your job. And my boss told me that a number of years ago. And I was like, that makes sense to me. You know, it's like, we got to push the limit of, and you, I think you cited like the, the Tesla uh, cyber truck or whatever. And, I mean, that, that really got destroyed quite a bit. And even in our design studio, it was kind of like, 
wow, it looks like a three-year-old made that, you know, or it's a door wedge or, you know, whatever else it was. <clears throat> but, but in the end, I mean, they took risks and they like purposely did that to try to be controversial. I mean, o over a hundred million people talked about that truck the next day and how ugly it was. And maybe they'll never come out with it. I, I, I doubt they will, but in the end, or if they do, it won't look like that. But in the end, everybody started talking about it and it was very controversial and it drove people to think about what that product was. And we're doing the same thing. I mean, obviously you don't want something that 100% of the people say that is the worst looking thing I've ever seen, right? Yeah. Like that's, that's not good. But if you've got a few people that don't feel comfortable about it, then you're in a good spot. You're in a good yeah. spot because you just, you just don't want to be vanilla, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, it's like a, a good song, right? If you hear a good song on the radio and you love it immediately, guaranteed you're going to hate to hear it in two weeks' time oh. when they're playing it every day. Oh, yeah, and then, your kids, and then your kids are listening to it like 15 times in the back of the truck, and you're just like, oh, my God, this is horrible. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But there's that one song that you're just like, all right, I'm not sure about this one. And then like a couple weeks later, you hear it at the, at the bar or whatever, and you're just like, oh, yeah, this, this is pretty cool. I like this is my jam. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, what inspires you? What inspires me? Yeah, for, you know, because you literally, I mean, you are designing these things, you and your team. What, what, what do you, what design, like, what inspires you when you look at something or is it, I don't know. Is Dave it, Nerona. Dave Nerona, Nerona inspires me. <laughs> Dave Nerona. That's, it's, it's two words. That's it. Like, uh, basically, you're my shining light. You'll, uh, you'll, <laughs> you'll get your uh, residual check. Uh, oh, okay, good. Okay, good. Uh, I'll just, just check it. Just a warning, it'll cost you more to cash it than, it, than the amount will be. But, <laughs> but no, I, I get it. Like, you, you got to, like, what inspires you? Is it, like, when you go to Italy, do you like going into churches? Do you like going into art? Do you like looking at, like, I want to go to the Ferrari dealership and look at the lines on a car? Or, where do oh, you for sure, get? yeah. I, I mean, we look, like, I mean, I think all of us, we really love, like, car design and, and motorcycle design and everything. So we really reference a lot of that. But sometimes it, it can, inspiration can come from anywhere. It can come from architecture, whatever. But a lot of the times, I mean, it's, it's obviously a lot of our friends that are in the design community and automotive, they're pushing the, the boundaries as well, too. So we look at a lot of that as a reference. And they also reference us, you know. Uh, basically, we do, like, a start of a project. We'll do what we call, like, kind of a design vision board. And we'll put together and it's just kind of like the character of what we want this project to be. And so we'll go through that and like, you know, pick images of different products, different vehicles, stuff like that, that, you know, or maybe, maybe it's just some piece of artwork or whatever, but inspiration comes from everywhere. I mean, it seriously does. It's, it's yeah. like when it, when it comes to design, it's one of those things where it's like you just look around and there's stuff that's going to inspire you, you know, whether it's like, I mean, you know, you're riding and you totally hooked me on these e-bikes, by the way. I'm going to check those out. I was watching on Monday. But, you know, you look at like mountain bikes. I mean, what a gorgeous piece of work, man. I mean, all the little components and details, same with the motorcycle. I mean, there's just so much cool stuff out there that, that, that you can pull reference from, you know, like, oh, man, I really love the brake lever on that new Specialized or whatever. And it's like you know what, all right, we could do something like this, but we're going to scale it up and, and we're going to change it and we're going we're gonna to make it better, whatever. But you, you just take reference from everywhere. It, it doesn't matter where it comes from, you know. Yeah. Hey, quick question. When are, when are we going to get a Can-Am motorcycle? Yeah, see, there's another one of your questions going in there. Well, we've got the Can-Am. we got the three-wheel. we got the Spider there going, and that thing's been pretty, pretty hot this yeah. year. That's been cool. It's been super sick, and the Riker's been, been awesome. Um, yeah. And, and uh, I want to know, I'll ask this last question because we're getting close. They cut us off or uh, we get an hour. So we're at 748. Oh, okay. I, I don't want to cut you off. Uh, I could talk to you all night. Um, I, <laughs> do you guys celebrate after each, uh, like, you know, seriously, when you put out the 850 turbo and the design and it came together and, and um, did you, what did, what did you guys do? Big parties. We, get, we do big parties for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I love to party. I know you do, and I've seen you party, by the way. And I've also, <laughs> you're the only guy that I've ever seen go to a BRP meeting in a hotel robe, okay? Well, That's, I just, honestly, like, I'm jealous because I could never pull that off. I got to put my BRP shirt on every day. Hotel robe, that was just classic. But, no, I mean, I, we always celebrate, you know, when we have some really cool stuff happening. And, uh, I mean, we go out for rides to celebrate after. We'll get everybody together. But, uh, I mean, it's just, again, having cool stuff come out, it's, you're just excited on the end of it anyways. That's, that's what it's all about. 
Hey, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. That This has been an honor, and I think everybody gets a little more insight into what you guys do, and I want to thank you for that. I will say that I don't like early morning meetings, and that was my way of kind of getting back at that at Mark because he loves early morning meetings. And yes. I, wore a, I wore a robe, and everybody at BRP,